Um, my name is Debbie Lempert. I am uh, co-chair of um, Tefilot with Toby Holtzman for Women's League. Um, we were asked to uh, design the prayer services at convention for 2020. And we had just started planning that when the world shut down. So we did help with the planning of the whole half hour service on Zoom convention. Um, and then we found out, I, not we, Rabbi Ellen and Debbie Goldich found out that there was someone who lost her mother right as the pandemic started and she had no way to say Kaddish. And so they decided to start something which has now become a Kombi Yahad, a group of women who meet every day from 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 12.30. And we started off learning Psalms because you need to learn, do a learning, and it's usually Psalms before you can say Kaddish. So it started off as learning Psalms, singing Mishabera, saying, reading the Kaddish list, and saying Kaddish. Well, who knew that all those Psalms later, we'd still be together? So then we started learning Pirkei Avot. And Lo and behold, we got through all of Pirkei Avot and we're still in the pandemic. <clears throat> so then now we've been learning Proverbs from Rabbi Margie Sella. And I'm not sure what we're going to be learning with Rabbi Ellen because we were learning Mishnah Rosh Hashanah and we finished that. So in all of that learning and studying, we have made so many wonderful friends. Many of you are on today. And... <clears throat> um, so my Toby and I took on helping to run that. Um, when I'm not busy doing that, I am teaching a uh, prayer class. I'm not really teaching Hebrew. We're reviewing prayers. And when I'm not doing that, I'm part of Central Great Lakes Region and past synagogue and sisterhood president of Adith Israel in Cincinnati, Ohio. So just a little busy. Um, I couldn't believe when I woke up this morning, it's like, oh, my gosh, the world stopped for a day, but now it's time to get back into it. So I thought we would just take a minute. Tell us um, just to briefly about yourself and um, your name, what sisterhood you come from, what region, and something you'd like us to know about. So I'm going to pick Elaine. And then, Elaine, if you'll pick somebody that hasn't gone yet. How's that? Okay. I'm Elaine Friedman. I live in Encino, California, which is part of Los Angeles. Um, I have been trying to get faster in the Hebrew since I was in college. When I was young, they didn't have bat mitzvah classes in Santa Barbara for girls or even very many for boys at that time in Santa Barbara. And um, I am active in my synagogue. I'm past president of Sisterhood. And I'm just thrilled to get into this class. Well, welcome. Will you pick someone to go next? Uh, OK, I'll start in the upper left-hand corner. Robin? Hi, I'm Robin Laufer. I live in Coral Springs, Florida, which is near Fort Lauderdale. I'm a member of Temple Beth Torah Share Tzedek Sisterhood. I've been treasurer, I guess, maybe the last four or five years and um, joined the beginner class, I guess, the beginning of COVID, starting really from scratch. And I was just amazed that I could actually follow the high holiday services word for word. And it's a miracle. So I'm real happy. Mazel tov, good job. Robin, would you pick someone? Yes, I'll take Andrea, who's next to me. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Stommel. I live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Um, we belong to Temple Beth Shalom in Cherry Hill. And I just finished the um, advanced beginner Hebrew class with Carol Green, and I'm excited in learning more. Um, I've been very active throughout the years with our sisterhood, various positions on the exec board, um, now I'm busy planning our initial um, welcome back membership event, which will be in a few weeks. So I'm looking forward to learning more Hebrew and getting to know everyone. Thank you. I will pick Gail, who's next on my screen. 
Okay, my name is Gail Purvis. I'm in Buffalo Grove, Illinois, a member of Congregation Beth Judea in Long Grove, Illinois. And I just finished Advanced Beginners with um, Carol Green as well. And I'm really trying, like Elaine said, to get faster. I mean, I was able to follow services, but with some of the readers, maybe not so much. <laughs> so that's really what I'm working on. And I'm really excited about uh, the progress that we've made. Thank and you. I Say will... hi to some of my good friends in your congregation, Rhonda Cohn and Debbie Green. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, my husband, my husband's a pediatrician. He took care of Debbie's kids when they were little and now they're big and have their own kids. So that's just amazing. So I will pick Maureen. Hi, I'm Maureen and I live in Tampa Bay, Florida. And when I was a child, I belonged to a Beth Tower, but I don't know if it's the same Beth Tower. Who, who was it that was Beth Tower? That was in Florida. Okay, yeah, it was in Florida. It was, I would lived in North Miami Beach at the time. So, no, different okay. one, I think. Okay, but it's not, it's not in North Miami Beach anymore. Anyway, we can talk about that another time. I belong to um, Congregation B'nai Israel here in St. Pete. And um, I'm looking forward to becoming faster in my Hebrew. Also, I was with Carol Green in the Advanced Beginners, I guess. Thank you. Oh, and I'll pick um, Harriet. I knew you would do that. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Harriet Shulman. I live in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, which is, of course, the bridge from Philadelphia, as does Andrea, who already introduced herself. And the funny thing is, is we were both in Carol Green's introductory or beginner Hebrew, and that's how we met. Even though we live in the same town, we never knew one another. We do belong to different synagogues, so that's part of it. I belong to Congregation Bethel. And um, in my younger days, or actually I should be more specific, in my children's younger days, I was quite active in the synagogue. And then I became more and more active in our federation. But recently I've become active in synagogue again. Um, we're looking for a new rabbi because our rabbi is retiring. So I'm currently on the rabbi search. <laughs> and um, what else are we supposed to say? Is that it? That's plenty, but okay. that's the wonderful thing about Women's League. You make new friends that might have been in your backyard. Oh, wait a minute. My status in Hebrew, that's the most important. Um, when I started in beginner's Hebrew, I taka was a beginner. Uh, I had never had Hebrew before. So I always feel that I'm behind everybody else, which I am, but I'm hoping to continue and catch up. Thank you, Harriet. Who do you pick next? Who do I pick next? Uh, did artists go already? No, I have not. Okay. Thank you, Harriet. Um, I'm also part of Carol Green's uh, beginning class. I'm in uh, Edina, which is a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. I am a past sisterhood president a couple times and I'm currently a co sisterhood president of Adath Yashurin in Minnetonka, Minnesota. I'm a past region president, and I'm currently the co-chair of social justice and an international vice president. Thank you, Artis. Uh, how about, uh, how about um, Sandy? I don't know who Sandy is, that's okay. Hi, um, I'm Sandy Carrollton. I'm from Rockford, or from a synagogue in Rockford, Illinois. So I'm Central Great Lakes region. Um, I wear um, several hats because we're a very small um, synagogue and sisterhood. Both have about 20, 21 members. And um, so um, I'm a yearly treasurer and um, part of a presidium president. Um, Terry is on, who's also part of that presidium. Um, we each do three months um, of presidency, but we've done this for about six or seven years. Um, and I also do the congregation um, newsletter for both sisterhood and, and um, congregation and the weekly newsletter also for both groups. Um, and also um, had the honor of being 
um, chosen as region secretary for Central Great Lakes just this um, last term. So um, spent a lot of time, um, got very interested in everything. I was one of the beginning members of Macomb Biakad, which I encourage all of you to check out at um, Central Time. It's 11, 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Um, at noon, um, it's really changed totally my life and my involvement um, in sisterhood and in congregation and in, in doing the prayers. Um, I did take an intermediate class last, last term, um, but there were still some things that were confusing to me. So I was lucky to be able to join again. Um, and I'm also part of the B'nai Mitzvah program through Women's League as well. Andy, I'm tired just hearing that whole description. Thank you for all you're doing. <clears throat> Who do you pick next? It really has changed my life, Debbie. So, um, but yeah. please don't I mean, think that if you come to Macomb Yahad, you have to commit to getting more involved in everything. It's just it it inspires us. It, so, thanks, Andy. It's, it, as you said, it's inspiring. Um, Ruth, I'll. Hey, Ruth Lebovitz. Um, I live in Franklin, Tennessee. I think I'm probably the only one here from Southern region. Um, so I belong to West End Synagogue in Nashville and um, I'm a past president of the sisterhood. Um, I am in Debbie's remedial Hebrew class because this is the second time I'm taking it. Um, and I have a daughter and grandson who live in Israel. So I need to beef up my Hebrew. And I wouldn't I, say remedial, remedial, Ruth. You're just honing skills sharper. Oh, I'm going to be sharp. <laughs> You're so nice. <laughs> um, and so I'll pick Terry because I know Terry a little bit from class before. Thank you, Ruth. I'm Terry Rifkin, and I'm with Sandy in Rockford, Illinois at Congregation Ohio Shalom. Um, I'm I'm part of the Sisterhood Presidium uh, Presidency, and my three months are, are, uh, are going to begin October 1st, October, November, and December. And then in January, I switched to becoming president of the congregation for four months. Wow. Mazel wow. Tov. Wow. Mazel tov. Yeah. Wonderful. So this has been going on for several years. And... Um, and I enjoy being involved. I like the congregation. I, I like people in it. And um, I like what we do. As far as Hebrew, I never went to Hebrew school. I didn't have, I didn't have any, um, any real knowledge of Hebrew, except for some of the parts of the service that I've listened to for a number of years, just parts, not that I can really, not that I could really read it. But I have to say that Debbie's class was fabulous. And I've Although I'm not proficient now, um, by any means, I've, I've actually come a long way. So yes, I did follow the services yesterday. I was thrilled that I did. Um, it, it didn't look so foreign to me when I saw the words and I can match it with what the rabbi was saying or what members of the congregation were saying. So um, I've enjoyed her class very much and I'm thrilled to be in it again. Glad to have you back, Terry. And let's see, I can't really read the names just too well, but it's, oh wait, I think you might have, Helene? Which one? Um, Herman? That's me, okay. <laughs> there, are two, there are two Helenes in the class, so we went as, and we're in the same class, uh, mm -hmm. Helene Williams and myself, so I go as Sylvia. If that makes it easier. My name is Helene Herman, Sipia Shandle. Um, I am currently the EVP of uh, Temple Sharet Sedek, uh, Temple Tower, Beth Tower Sharet Sedek, along with Robin, uh, who is the treasurer. I will, we're on a different schedule, so I'll become president in January. I don't know why we're on an annual schedule, but anyway. Um, took classes with Robin and Elaine and um, Helene Grants under Carol Greenberg. It was fabulous. And again, we made, not only did we develop our knowledge, we made a lot of really good friends throughout the country. 
uh, also honed our involvement and appreciation for the Women's League. Um, one of the things I do want to um, start out with, with no Hebrew at all. I couldn't even read the sign that said kosher. I mean, I had no idea and um, really have progressed. It was wonderful to be able to track uh, services, even if I couldn't go fast enough, except we had somebody who did part of the services who does it Ashkenazi. So I'm going, wait a minute, that's a T. That's not an S. <laughs> it drove me crazy. Um, but it's been a wonderful experience, and I look forward to uh, learning more and continuing and making a lot of new friends. So with that in mind, I'm going to pick about, oh, I live in Tamarack, Florida, about two miles away from Robin, but I don't walk there. Um, I'm going to uh, pick Corrine. Okay, thank you. I, it's lovely to see all these new faces. A lot of you I don't know. Uh, and I think I'm the only one out of this group who does not live in the States. I live in Toronto, Canada. Ah. And, uh, but I've been involved in Women's League for a long time. I'm a past sisterhood president. I'm a past regional president. I'm now environment chair for Women's League and uh, I'm membership VP for my region and I'm a mentor and I'm a consultant. So I've been around a long time, but I am the import. And as you can hear, I never, wasn't born in Canada either. Uh, I'm originally South African and uh, it's just been amazing. I mean, my journey through Women's League is phenomenal. And uh, yeah, I learned with the beginner with Anne Schomburg and uh, I am by no means proficient but I certainly was able to follow the service a lot better than I've ever been before, except when they mumble on so fast that like, I don't know how they can even, how their mouths move so fast and it's impossible then. And then I find it difficult to find my place again. I'm not, cause I think I'm not proficient in knowing the, the order of the service. So I can't like just pick it up and know where we are. But I'm certainly hoping to learn, and I'm looking forward to learning with Debbie. Thank you, Corinne. Who do you pick next? I can't see anybody, but has Elaine Friedman been? Yes, I, I was first. Why don't okay. the ones that haven't spoken just raise their hands? I can't see because I've only got a few people on my screen. All right. How about, Lori, why don't you go? Gail? Has Gail gone? Artis has gone. Robin's gone. I'm looking for people. How about Lori? We'll go have Lori go next. <clears throat> okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I'm Lori Silverblatt. I was also in Carol Green's advanced beginner class. Um, I'm past sisterhood president and I've been active in women's league for a long time and I'm on several committees. Um, right now there's a new initiative where I'm the women's league representative for a joint initiative with um, USCJ and ADL. It's on anti-Semitism, some webinars, and I'll keep you posted. Um, I think it'll be exciting. That's all the information I have about that. Um, but I'm very excited to be here. I was able to follow along um, during services um, a lot more than previously. So it was very exciting and I'm happy to be here. And let me see who's next. Um, Susan Hall? Yep. Um, I'm Susan Hall from London, Ontario, Canada. And I belong to Congregation or Shalom, and I'm the current president of the Sisterhood. Um, I've all, I'm also a past president of the congregation a few years ago now. And my, um, um, I, I can sort of read basic Hebrew and, and follow along, but um, I'd like to become much more fluent. And I'd also like to um, have a better sense of exactly what I'm saying, or a little bit, sort of know what I'm saying. It's nice to know the words, but it's nice to be able to read the words, but I, I want to know what they mean when I'm saying them. Well, I read the English and then that helps. Yeah. Then, so. then we're going to be talking about the prayers as we go along. Thank Great. you, Susan. Can you pick yeah. someone? Debbie, can I interrupt for a minute? Of course you can, Thank Julia. You. In your introductions. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to drop in, introduce myself to those who don't know me yet. Uh, my name is Julia Loeb. I'm the co-chair of the Education Committee for Women's League, who puts these classes together. Um, so I've been the one that's been sending you emails along with Debbie, and I just wanted you to be able to put a, sorry about the construction noise, 
to put a face to an email and um, and for me too, you know, I've been staring at your names on the spreadsheet for a couple of weeks now. So it's also good to, to put faces to names. And if you have any questions or issues, please reach out to me either from the email that I sent or um, my email, I can give it to you directly. It's jloeb at wlcj.org. Julia. Julia, can you drop that in the chat for everyone to see? Yes, I'll put it in the chat. Thank you. Debbie? Susan, yes. Excuse me, I forgot to tell you guys I'm from Texas. Um, I'm from a different Texas, not the one that you guys have heard about lately, but <laughs> a warm, friendly, wonderful Texas that will come back someday. So I'm um, from the Houston area. Thank but you for that part of Texas, Lori. <laughs> Susan, did you want to pick someone next? It has Helene Thanks, everyone. Uh, this did not. Yeah. Uh, Helene, Helene Grants. I live in Boca Raton, Florida. I've been here since 1975. There were no Jewish people in Boca Raton in 1975. A handful. There were no synagogues. Uh, the list of what I participated in with B'nai Torah and Bethel and B'nai Israel is too long to, to go through. Uh, but in listening to that, it brought back memories. Um, I am now, they created some new position for me with Women's League uh, Social Action Vice President. So that's because of the work I've done with um, National Council of Jewish Women. I'm very active in that area. And uh, I would like to be more fluid uh, in my reading. I would like to uh, understand the repetitions because that always throws me off as to where we are. Uh, when the Chazan goes back and says a phrase again, I'm like, ah. Uh, and had a wonderful time with Carol Greenberg and all the folks because we did learn uh, some roots and it makes it easier to uh, grasp. It makes me, it easier for me to remember uh, some of the words and apply the root to some other word that's part of the prayer. So oh, and I'm, I'm originally from Borough Park in Brooklyn. So you would think I would know a lot of Hebrew, but nah, <laughs> Yiddish. Yechred Yiddish, Good to know when we have Yiddish questions. Yeah. Um, Judy, you haven't gone yet, have you? No, I haven't. I'm Judy Lewis and I'm in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I'm actually in exile from Peabody, Massachusetts, which is where my religious home really is. Um, even though we've been here 28 years, it still doesn't quite feel like home. Um, in Peabody, for, and for many years, only woman president of the congregation, which was a real ex lived experience to a congregation that wasn't terribly feminist in its origin. So they, I had a lot to teach them. I know Hebrew okay, I mean, lead services, Mincha and Marav at a Shiva home, but I know what the beginning and the end of the prayers in Hebrew, and then I have to read the middle in English because otherwise we'd be there all half the night. Um, I now belong to Temple Bethel in Richmond. I do not belong to Women's League because I protested when Women's League disaffiliated, when our sisterhood disaffiliated from Women's League because uh, they didn't feel they were getting their money's worth. So I said, screw you. And I am an individual league because I really believe in um, United Synagogue and Women's League and all of the uh, overarching organizations. I have been involved in Women's League Read, which I have found to be an incredible program. That's the one I'm the most with. And uh, did go to Hebrew school. And I want to say to my friend in Texas, keep the faith. I'm a women's health nurse practitioner and uh, I just am so angry and look forward to helping Texas and the USA connected. Thank you, Judy. Anybody who has not had a turn yet. Thank you, ladies. It's so nice to get to know some new women. Some of you are involved at the Women's League level and I haven't gotten to meet you yet. So I'm so glad to meet you today. Um, I went to Hebrew school till seventh grade, had my bat mitzvah and said, I'm done, done, done. I don't wanna do this anymore. 
<clears throat> the idea of sitting through four more years with the rabbi as a teacher, was, I was not having it. Um, but I did join the choir at 13, learned a lot of the high holiday prayers. Uh, my brother used to daven Erev Rosh Hashanah. He moved to Japan and bestowed that role on me. So then I had to really learn it. And I've just been involved in leading lots and lots of prayer services. I do not know Hebrew beyond what a kindergarten class uses. So I won't be able to really help you with the root words. Um, I'm not going to be able to tell you why there are dots there that don't belong there. This was a big part of my last class is why the dots? I don't know if my son, the wannabe rabbi was here, he could explain it to us. Um, but I do feel it's important that we understand why we're saying what we're saying. My brother-in-law once said to my husband and I, he is fairly agnostic. He said, why do you pray in a language? You don't even know what you're saying. And uh, to me, it's the singing that connects me, but I'm learning more about what I'm saying. And this class is really helping me. Um, for those of you who have been in class before in Carol Green's or Carol Greenberg's, um, I don't know exactly all of the prayers that you studied. Um, so you might find some repetition here, but I think that's only going to help you hone in your skills even more. You will get out of this class what you put into it. I'm not going to necessarily teach you something new. I'm going to introduce some prayers you might know, some background you might know, but this is really a class where I guide you and you work on practicing the prayers. So the more that you work on them, the more fluent you will become. Um, this is a large group. And so the way I've done it in the past, the way the ladies in my last two classes liked it was that we would take turns reading parts of the prayer. If we find that that's just too cumbersome with so many people, we'll split up into breakout rooms. But I feel like it's good for you to hear other people read. It's amazing when you're reading, you make mistakes and you're like, oh, I knew I knew that. When someone else is reading it, you know the word's fine. So um, we're all friends here. We're all sisters here. No one's going to judge you. At least they're not going to say it out loud to you and hopefully not think it. So uh -huh. it's okay to try, make mistakes. Um, I'm trying to be very patient and give you wait time. Um, so um, the way I like to do it is I like to play pickup or popcorn. So somebody volunteers to start reading and they might read a line, they might read two or three lines. And when they've had it, they're just done struggling through the words or blow, you know, reading quickly through the words, then they'll say pick up and somebody else can volunteer to read. Um, so I'm really focusing mostly on Shabbat morning. And then we'll go into Hallel later on. Um, and we'll do um, beer kat hamazon if you haven't done that. So, you know, you'll learn, you'll pick up more than you knew last time. So are there any questions before we start officially? Okay. Um, today we're going to work on a few beginning prayers. So here is a, I'm going to make this bigger. Give me a second. And I'll try to make it bigger if I can. Sometimes that means not showing it as an actual slide presentation, but more as a just not presented. This is actually some women davening at Women's League. I don't know where and when it was, but I loved the picture. So the very first thing we're going to cover is the, the blessing for learning Torah, La Asok B'divrei Torah. And um, let me see here if I can move you around on my screen so I can see everybody. Is anybody familiar with this prayer, La Asok B'divrei Torah? Yeah. Yes. Great. Um, I used to know the tune. I just knew know the end of the tune. So I'm not going to sing it for you. Um, would somebody be willing to read Birchot HaTorah for us? I will. Um, All right. Okay. Uh, can I do it? Sure, Corinne, go for it. Okay, Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Ashe Kedeshanu B'mitzvotav B'tzivanu La Asok B'debre Torah. Nice. Does anybody know how to sing that? I think this is the prayer that my Talmud class says before we start studying Talmud. 
Exactly. And I'd never heard it until I went to junior congregation with my kids. <laughs> um, so would someone read it for us in English so we know what we're saying? You can just... I'll do it. Okay, thank you. Okay. Baruch Adonai, our God, sovereign of time and space, who has provided us with a path to holiness through the observance of mitzvot and has instructed us to engage with... Whoop. Cut okay. off. Uh, yeah, hold on, let me fix it. Okay. Looks um, like a... What I like in this, in this translation is the translation of, of sovereign as opposed to king. So I was on a Jewish... Um, there's a, a Jewish channel that I have access to down here. And um, it's the classes in Hebrew were taught by many years ago by a rabbi. And he said that the word, it's really not king. He said, don't think of a king. Don't think of a man, because that's not our deity. It's not a man in the sky. But think of it as a sovereign, more of a ruler than a king. So I think that's a great translation for it, as opposed to saying king. And I apologize, it did get cut off when I copied and pasted yeah, it. To instruct us, because I printed it out to engage with. <laughs> in, to, to engage with the words of Torah. The words and of Torah. I agree with you. Tell me how to pronounce Sivia. Is that right? Sivia. 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 And, I have, words... I have, and I have a, 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 an Israeli family, so it doesn't make a difference how much I study. They're going to correct me anyway. Well, you know, the, the, the translation really does mean something. I try so hard with the younger kids not to use Lord, not to use King, but you have to think about when these prayers were written and what was right. around the people, Kings and Lords. So it bothers me when it's not gender neutral, but I just keep in mind that it's just this divine entity that is larger than us. So well, I, had, I had a female rabbi in New York, so she would never use anything male. And the image, when you, it's the image of a crown as opposed to a, a man. Well, to yep. me, it helps. So, so yeah. thank you. So it's just something that we say when we're going to study Torah. We're not going to study Torah today, but when you do, this is often a blessing that you use. And it does come early in the service. And is this, appropriate, is this appropriate also for, for a prayer before studying Talmud? I would think so. Okay. We say, I, I belong to our retired rabbi's Talmud class. And this is, we do this one and then we do, um, we have a piece in English and then we end with the prayer that you do before you're called up to read. The, we use this prayer as the as the opening to our Talmud class every that's week. That's wonderful. And I'm really thinking that for Women's League, for our Makombi Yahad, we should probably say this. I'm going to bring this to Rabbi Ellen, that it would be great before we study anything. I agree. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, for that inspiration. You, so asked, next week, about, you asked about the tune. It yes. starts the same as the lighting of the candles. Would the tune be the same? Would you like to sing it for us? Oh, I can't carry a tune, but you just took it off this I'm sorry, I just have to take it. Well, I want to go into the, the Shabbat. <laughs> I know the ending. I can't remember how to start it. La asopidi. Green has a better voice than I do. La asopidi re Torah. I can't remember how the beginning goes though. It's similar. So I want to tell you a little bit about the Barhu, which is coming up next. Um, it's the call to prayer that initially is recited at home or silent before the service. It used to start, we used to say it at the start of the Shema, but now um if you're praying at home, it's before the Shema. Although the Barhu literally means bless, it's also the equivalent of praise because it would be very presumptuous to think that we as human beings and mortals could somehow confer a blessing onto God. Instead of Barhu recognizes that God is the source of all blessings and is an assertion of the worshiper's dedication to fulfill God's will by performing the divine commandments. And, and it's also... 
what do we say when we come up to the Torah for an Aliyah, which all of these years that I've been doing all of this, I never connected those two. It took this uh, class where we said, and someone pointed out, oh, that's the same that I realized it. So I'm learning with you. And Barech is the word for knee. So when we say Baruchu, when we bend at our knees, it's from the Hebrew word Barech for knee. So we bend at our knees. So just a little bit something. So I'm going to go to the Barhu, which may be very familiar to many of you. Would someone be willing to read this for us? <coughs> Thank you, Elaine. Oh, wait, uh -huh. Elaine, if you read and then we need someone, well, you can read it and we'll take turns. All right, go ahead and read the whole thing. Barahu at Adonai Hambarah, Baruch Adonai Hambarah, Melam Baed. Nice job. And I asked Rabbi Ellen, you know, there's Barhu and then there's Baruch. And I wasn't sure why, what the difference is, because in English, it's pretty much the same. I'm oh, sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to get my cursor to move on my screen and I'm not seeing it. But um, I think Baruch is the plural, isn't it? Um, yes, it could be. But she said, you know, the, the in the English, it's the same. You are correct. It is plural. But um, it's interesting. Praise. Uh, uh, would someone read it for us in English? Praise Thank you, Gail. To whom all praise is directed. Mm. Praise the noise to whom all praise is directed forever and ever. And I think Lev Shalem, thank you, Helene, did a good job of making it gender neutral. Because it sounds a little formal, but so this is our call to worship. Um, is everybody familiar with this blessing? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. But when we do it in not at the Torah, it has many different tunes. It might have on Friday night, it might be Baruch et Adonai Hamavorah. Baruch Adonai Baruch Le'olam Va'ed, but it has a different tune, or we call that a nusach, if it's um, Mincha, <coughs> Mincha and Mariv are generally the same. Um, somebody had their hand up. Harriet, was that you? No. Um, no, I was just having trouble with the buttons when you asked somebody to read it in English. I oh. put my hand up, then I couldn't get rid of it. You can just uh -huh. raise your physical hand because I can see all of you. Okay. Someone had a question. Nope. Okay. So light and easy stuff to start with. Mm -hmm. Yotzer Or is next in our prayer service. And um, this is what we say early on in the service. Um, so um, anybody familiar with this prayer? Yeah. Would someone like to try reading it for us? I can. Thank you, Elaine. No, it's Judy. Oh, sorry, Judy. I saw Elaine's box light. Go for it, Judy. Baruch Eta Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Yotzer Or Uvarei Koshech Ose Shalom Uvarei Atako. Thank you. Does anybody recognize any words within that prayer that might be familiar without looking besides, at the English? Besides Baruch Eta Adonai. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Or, besides or, those. Or. What is it? Or, or what is or? or. Right. Is it light? Right. Any others you recognize? I don't know that because that's my mock time. You might hear at Passover Hoshech. when we're doing the Ten Commandments, Hoshech, Hoshech. Darkness. darkness. Say and any other words you recognize in there? And coal is everything. Everything, right? Correct. How about Ose Shalom? Ose Shalom. I yep. didn't realize I've been muted. I was saying Shalom. 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 Peace. Yeah. So. You can start to pick up some of these key things with this prayer is about light and darkness and peace for all. Would someone read it for us in English? Hello. Thanks, Gail. Baruch Adonai, our God, sovereign of time and space, forming light and creating darkness, bringing harmony while creating all. Thank you. Let me share a little bit about Yotzer Or. The Midrash teaches us that Adam and Eve were the first to recite this prayer when they were in the Garden of Eden. Judaism recognizes that the sun is a central 
is central to all life, and so we thank God for sunlight. Prayer praises all of God's work, but not everything in our world is wonderful. But we human beings are particularly prone to seeing the bad things and ignoring the good things. This blessing serves to remind us to notice the miracles around us, the gift of loving and being loved, the ability to learn and to understand the world around us, the miracle of each new day that we get to be alive. This blessing reminds us that things that seem terrible are also part of God's plan. If we lived in a perfect world with no challenges or hardships, we would have no ambitions or strive to make the world better. If the world had good all the time, then human, be human beings would not have the free will to make good choices. If there was not such a thing as death, younger generations would never have a chance to take responsibility for their future, their own hopes and aspirations. I get that got that from Wikipedia, so none of this is original. <laughs> for, I didn't write any of this, but I think it's interesting that you know when we sit when we read the Yotzer Or. Um, just something to think about, you know, thinking about, I, I, just, I teach kindergarten and we, our topic was just a couple of weeks ago, um, Hakarat Hatov, seeing the good things in life. And five and six year olds struggle with, they mix up that with meets vote. And I guess that's okay. Cause meets vote are doing, you know, the right thing, doing the commandments. So sometimes we need to turn off the news and focus more on the good things that the news doesn't share with us. Debbie, uh -huh. question. Uh, yes. When you put it in your search box, uh, Wikipedia, what buzzwords did you put in there? I put in, I try for each and I try to put in origins of Yotzer Or. It came from, I'll put it in the chat where I got it. Um, give me a second. Now my cursor came back. Yay. Abad.org is a great resource. Yes. Are there any questions about Yotzer or? Which is, the, yes. which, is the, which is the word for darkness in here? We uh, have the last word. word on the second line, Hoshech. Hoshech. Okay. Could we read it in Hebrew again? I'm sorry. I kept clearing my throat and it looked like I was raising my hand. Go for it. Why don't you read it for us, Elaine? <clears throat> well, okay. And we'll give everybody a chance who wants one. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam yotzer or uvo re hashech. Careful, there's the he, the chet has a little dot above it to make it sound. It's ho. There you go. Hosher, hosher. Yep. Oseh. Shalom, uvo re et hakol. Great job, Elaine. Sometimes you'll note, you might find that there's like one dot shared between two letters up there. In this right. case, they gave us both, but sometimes it's just yeah. one. Would anybody else like to take a turn reading Yotzer Or? Well, that's right. Thanks, Elohenu Olam. Yotzer or Uv Ore He Kol Shech. Good job. Oh, keep going? Yes. Oh, Yotzer Shal Ose Shalom Uv Uv Ore Et Ha Kol. Nice job, Ruth. Thanks. You know, it's very exciting, too, when you see phrases you recognize. You don't have to, you know, sound them out. It's like, oh, I know, that's Osei Shalom. It, that's a really exciting time when you recognize chunks. Um, and it makes your reading much easier. And it really helps us to appreciate brand new readers, rather, when, in any language, but especially little kids, that hard work they go through to read, which is something we take for granted at our age. So I have a question about this prayer. Sure. So I'm trying to find it in the in the Siddur Sim Shalom for Shabbat and festivals, and it should be I should be able to find it before the Shema, but I'm not finding it. In Siddur, in Lev Shalom, it's pretty early. Okay. It's, um, it's a morning. It's a morning prayer. Yes. So. It's a morning, so morning. I'll give you what it's around. 
Um, you have a page. No, yeah. because I don't have that book. One. Different yeah, versions. Yeah. It's, the, it's what, the raved one, JP. Um, no, it which? comes right before. Um, it's on 107 in Simshaw. Right. So it's after putting on your tali and after Birafo Tashafar, which is next for us. So if you can find Birafo Tashafar, um, which is at the beginning of very beginning of the service. Um, right after. Oh, I, th I found it. Oh. Can you tell us the page, Gail? It's, it is 107 in my, in the, that's right, in the Shabbat and festivals. Great. Good. So, Good to know. <laughs> would somebody else like to try Yotzer Or? I'd like to. Thank you, Susan. Um, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Hawalam Yotzer. Careful, there's a there's a letter beginning before the O. Yo ser or or u u um vorek ho shek ose shalom u vore et hako. Nice job. Nice reading, ladies. Anybody else? Um okay. I would like to. Okay, Helene. Uh those we used to, we call them double duty dots uh, or the places where there's a vav and you don't realize it's a vav you think it's just a no or vice versa. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Yotzer Or Uvore Hashech Hoshech. There you go. my double duty dot that I forgot. Yep. Okay. Hoshech Ose Shalom Uvore Et Nice. Robin, would you like a turn? Beautiful. Anybody else? Don't we love when for half the prayer is Baruch Atadonai Elohenu Melech Olam? Yes. Um, one thing I want to point out about the beginning of that prayer, that's a very common opener of a prayer and I call it, is it the mitzvah prayer or not? So normally a prayer starts Baruch, well, you can't see my friend, Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. That's a regular blessing. If it has Asher Kichanu Bemitzvotav, but adding those extra words Bemitzvotav indicates there's a mitzvah that this is a blessing for a mitzvah. So we'll see those later, but this is not a commandment blessing. This is a regular standard formula for a blessing. So anybody else want to try before we move to the next one? Okay. Great, Terry, thank you. Baruch atah Adonai, Elhenu Malkolam, Yoser or Uvore, Hoshe, Ose Shalom, Uvo, Uvore, Et, Hakol. Great. I notice Uvore happens twice. So you'll start to notice, oh, I don't have to like sound out that word anymore. It's there twice. I, you'll start to see things. Anyone else? All right. We're going to start Bir Ho Tashahar. Um, I don't have this, there we go. Um, and these are the morning blessings that we say. Um, some people say them at home. I know that I say them when I daven Pazuke de Zimra. Um, so again, we're very lucky because we have the opening part that's very familiar. Um, depending on which prayer book you use, Orthodox, conservative, reform, anywhere among in between, the um, translation can be very different. So we're going to read these. We'll have somebody read it in Hebrew and then somebody else read it for us in English, line by, or actually, if you'll read, we'll take turns reading a line, if you'll read it in Hebrew and then in English, and then we'll pick <laughs> someone else. So who, have, who would like to start for Birchot Hashachar? I'll give it a shot. Thank you, Vivian. By the way, Robin, it's on page 146 of Hadash. 
still know. What page is it in the red book? It is on page 104. Right. Thank you. There's a letter after the chaf. I have la. Is it la? Sech. La sech. Me. La sech. Me. There you go. Me. Da. That's only because I practiced this morning, right? La sech. La sech. Me. Bina. Le hav. Le hav. Le hachiv. Le hachin. There you go. Le hachin. Bain. Yom. Uvein, Uvein, La. Is that is that La La, la or is it Layla? Layla. 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 Yeah, Layla. Let's see. Patah with the the comments with the thing. Okay, Layla. Good job. And there's Yom too. So Yom and Layla. Layla. Day and night. Would you read uh, Sevilla the English for us? This. So it's Baruch Atadonai, our God, sovereign of time and space, who enables the bird to distinguish day from night. Interesting that they picked a bird. I know. And I have plenty of birds who don't know how to distinguish day from night, but that's another story. <laughs> and I know that the word for bird is Sipur, and I don't see Sipur in here, which tells me that many of our prayers are not translated word for word. There are many words for bird. I know I went through that with my Israeli family because I'm I'm Taibo, which is little bird. Mm. You know, Taibo is little bird. We know that from Fiddler on the Roof. But in uh, in Hebrew, there are a lot of different words for bird. So I'm going to have to go back and search for yeah. which one of these is bird. Yeah. There's a few of them. Thank you. Yeah. Who would so like to try? So just just to verify, it's Lila. So the 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 comments with the um with the yud after it. That's an I sound always. Yes, lie. Lie. Just like if you had the word L Y E, lie, you know, it doesn't, the yud doesn't really make a sound, but they put them together, it's hard. It would be la without the yud. Right. Lie. Thank you. And by the way, nobody ever taught me the names of all the um, vowels. So I just say the two dots, the one that looks like a T. So <laughs> forgive me. All right. Thank you. No, it's fine. It's fine. Larry, it's would you like better. to read the second one? Um, are we on the third line now? Yes, we are. Okay, I go a lot more slowly, so you'll have That's to- That's no rush and it's not a race. Everyone gets to learn at the end. Yes, you're not a canter. You're not racing to the end, okay? What was better? Nice job. Betsalamo. Yeah, it's hard with those two dots under letters, which tells us to insert a little bit of a break. But when people dive in very quickly, it'll come at Bitsalmo. So as you're learning, you would say Bitsalmo, but when you read, it comes out quicker. Thank you. Would you read it in English for us? Much easier. <laughs> um, the third line, the yes. name of the divine image. Yep. Um, and if you've heard the phrase B'Tselem Elohim, everybody's made in God's image, B'Tselemo comes from that word. Great. Next one. One, two, three, four. Line four. I'll try it. Thank you, Elaine. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam She'asani Ben Bat Horech, Horech. Try put the ending on that. Horech, Horean. That's a no. There you go, Horean. Okay, so I didn't warn you about the Ben Bot. So you can tell this is a um, egalitarian prayer book because Ben is. Does anybody know what Ben means? Son, Son of. Son of. Son of. And Bot. Daughter. 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 So you have to pick which one applies to you because you're the davener. So Sha'asani, we would be Ba'ah. Uh, uh, All right. Would you read that for us in English? 
who made me free, who made me a Jew. Well, it's just that, that one, right? who made me free. Oh, who made me free, sorry. But that would be indicate daughter or son of. So again, uh, I think it's not a literal translation here. I think uh, instead of free, it actually means didn't make me a slave. Yes, I think you're right. In the other translations, I've seen that. The one that annoys me is thank you for not making me a woman. <laughs> yes. That's why yeah. we don't have that That's one, Corinne. I don't get why they say that. I have well, a different interpretation if anybody wants to know. It's never bothered me. Okay. Because I, I, I understand. It's a very feminist uh, approach to it. But my feeling was that men were saying that women have too much to do and too much responsibility. And it made perfect sense for me. And they don't get their period. And they don't have the, the pain of childbirth. So for me growing up, it made perfect sense that they didn't want to be a female. It was not a slur. That, um, women didn't have the same obligations as men and that we were like far beyond men that they have to work harder at- Yes, we are holier. Huh? Right, we are holier by nature. Right. Thank you, so, I like that. And I'm not sure that most men could handle what we women go through on a monthly basis and child exactly. oh, yeah. 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 exactly. <laughs> But it is interesting, the different interpretations. Instead of saying, thank you for not making me a slave, thank you for making me free. So it's just an interpretation. Yes. Yeah. Somebody nice. read the third line from the bottom. All right. On, on the slide, at least. The third I'm, line from the bottom, I'll read. Okay, Corinne. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. I love that part. That means Sheya Sini Yisrael. Try that. Yeah, second to last. Battling with that Sheya. It's not Ya. That's an Ayin. Yeah, Ayin is silent. It just looks like a Y. Yeah. Oh, so She Sani. Sha Sani. Okay, She Sani. Okay. That 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 thing that looks like a Y. It's an ayin. It doesn't have any sound unless it has a vowel under it. Right. And it does. Yep. So it's can you read it again? You just read the vowel. She Sani. Great. Sha Sani Israel. And what does that mean, Corinne? Can you read the English? Yeah. Is that also third line from the bottom? Yes, it is. Who made me a Jew? There you go. Interesting. Um, second to last line. Is there anybody who hasn't gotten a chance to read who would like to? Andrea. I'll try. Um, Great. That's all we ask. Baruch Ta Adonai Elohenu Melek Haolam Ho Kecha. So let's talk about that last letter of that word. Ha, when, ha. when you take it out of context, it is ha. But in, uh -huh. and I don't can't tell you the reason why, but in when it is at the end of a word, it becomes po ke ach. Oh, at I the knew end that. Of the word, it's ha. Right. It reverses. Of, what? It reverses. Yes. So it's po ke ach. There you go. Um, Eve, Eve, Reem. Nice job, Andrea. Could you read it oh, to us in English? Who gives sight to the blind. Wonderful. Someone who hasn't had a chance who'd like to do the last line on this page. Maureen. Oops, sorry. I can't touch the right button. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halom Malbish Aru Mim. Beautiful. And what does that mean in English? Who clothes the naked. Thank you. Are you okay all to stay on for, to finish this prayer? How long is it? Um, I will show you. I thought that's the end. <laughs> Should we fit, continue next time? Oh, yeah. okay. Yes. I okay. see. I think so. so, cause we have quite a few more, it goes on. Um, so take some time in the next week when you're not busy at synagogue or online with Sukkot and um, to read through this Birchot HaShachar, 
Um, next time, my hope is to cover, um, hold on a minute. I, hold on a second. I'll yeah. um, next comes Shema via Hafta and the last paragraph. And we'll see and along with that. So we'll see how much we get through. Um, so I'm excited for this class. Ladies, thank you. If you did not get a chance to read today, um, just got to be upfront and put yourself out there. I try to look at the screen, but I'm watching many different things. So I've loved getting to meet all of you. I hope you'll come back next week. And um, I wish you all a Hag Sameach. And a, ha next time we see each other, it will still be Sukkot. Well, Hag Sameach. Hag Sameach, everybody. And thank you, Debbie. Thank you, Debbie. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Nice to meet you.